man, let me say this. I thank God you waited until I got saved to give me this one. Come on. Because I would have lost that one. But that curse, dead. Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, I got the keys to keep in this guy. And saying in line with God, everything else will fall in place. Come on, son. Come on. Jesus. Oh, my God. Like a follower of God must always seek God in order for him to raise up godly children. That's it. Amen. A father must have God as his provider and his teacher. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you got to know God will give you what you want so you can teach your son or daughter that he will give them what they want. That's right. But if you've never been provided by from God, how can you say God going to provide Come on, come on now. Come on now. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. You've been provided for yourself, but you never had to lean and depend on Jesus. So how are you going to teach your own? Great to lean and depend on Jesus. You never yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You can only give him what you got. What you got, yeah. And if you ain't got it from God, then you can't give it to him. Hallelujah. Now, God won't make room and do it himself if they be. But you, as a father, must nurture and give them the attributes that God has given you. Yes. So yes. you got to seek God for the understanding of how to raise your child. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't do it alone. Hallelujah. Fathers of God must go to God for counsel. Hmm. We were talking about that earlier. You got to go to God for counsel. Lord, my son is acting up, but my daughter is acting up. What must I do? I can't go to the courts and ask him. Yes, man. Come on now. Because then, terminology. Mm-hmm. They need to be locked up. Locked up, that's what they say. That's their terminology. Mm-hmm. They need something to fix. Mm-hmm. A pill or something. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Come on now, come on. But when you go to God, God said you need to take them down on their knees and pray. Yes. Ah. And believe and trust that everything's going to be all right. Ooh, God, hallelujah. But that's when you got the mindset of God and the will of God in your life. Then you know how to deal with your children. A father must have God in his life in order to raise godly children. There's no other way. That's right. Hallelujah. Fathers must lean on God for all answers about their household. Mm -hmm. I'm learning this stuff because I'm just beginning. Jesus. I'm just beginning. I'm glad I know this. I'm going to lean on God for advice. On how? Because see, what happened for you and yours can't work for me and mine. Come on, co-pastor. Come on now. Not only were they going on different frames, right? Time periods, <laughs> but we're two different individuals. Yes, yes. So my calling is not like your calling. So what your calling is for yours can't work for mine. Yeah. yeah. So I got to. Oh, I got to help with God to understand what's best for. Me. Now, I don't mind your advice. Uh-huh. If I can use it, I use it. But I'm going to God. Yes. Because I know how to give an answer. Uh-huh. Like I said earlier, you have to go through something to be able to give your kids something. I will do something so I know how to get an answer for me. So now I know how to give an answer for him. Yes, uh-huh. yes, yes. Hallelujah. You can't give them nothing. That's true. My Lord. God has a plan for all fathers, and we must seek God for the plan and the right way to lead as men and fathers of God. Fathers of God, listen now, does not have to be biological. Right. All men are fathers. Mm-hmm. All men are fathers. And what he's telling me is that this is important. When a new creation come into the church Jesus. and give their life to Christ, mm. they are babes. Yes, yes. A babe need a fall. Yes, yes. mm. So for you that say you don't have no children, you have children. Mm-hmm. Because if I've been in the church for three years and somebody just come in the church for six months, I'm a senior. I'm a father to them because i got to give them the word. Uh-huh. A father feeds. So I must feed them the word of God. Yes. When you're a father of God. Otherwise, all new babies are yours. 
the possibilities. Mm -hmm. So you must have the word to give the word to the newcomers in the church. Right. And many times there's new people come and get saved and have nobody to guide them. That's right. Lead them right. or show them the way. Amen. And like that day I was saying, if you don't show, we will. Uh-huh. Right it's our job to show them how to get their salvation whole. Yes, yes. Amen. That's why it's important when new people come into church, you've got to make sure you get their numbers and things to stay in point with them. Mm -hmm. Because they're at your... Yes, yes. My God. Hallelujah. Because all men are fathers of their nieces, their nephews, their cousins. Somewhere in your life you have to be a father figure. That's for those that say you're not a father. You are a father. You have to be a father to your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, or somebody. Right, right. So, you're not fatherless. Hallelujah. I learned that. I didn't know that when I was acting as a father until I realized this message that I was a father to my nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Because their biological father was not there, so I was there as an uncle, like you said, father. Nieces and nephews are just as, you are a father just to them as they are to their biological father when they're not present. So you could be a father. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I gotta get this word. I'm, I'm gonna get this to you. Because it's important. Jesus, go ahead. One important ministry is love. In order to be a father, you gotta have love of God to God. you on the right way. Because if you don't have love of God, you're gonna get like I was abusive. Because mm -hmm. you don't know no better. You think everything is a pop of side of the head. That's not the key. Come on now. Everything is prayer and fasting for yours. Uh -huh. You gotta pray and fast that your kids line up right. And you're never too old to learn. No, like I was saying, you could be your kid could be 30 years old and he still needs you as a father. Because yeah. your father days never end yeah. till they're gone. Yeah. You are a father for life. for life. And that's your responsibility. So when they're 20 years old and they leave your house, they still your responsibility. Yeah. That's right. Come on, sir. You're not accountable. Well, my son is 30, so he ain't no longer under my roof. Mm -hmm. You're still a father, and you still got to do the fatherly things. Yeah. Especially when you get grace in your life, that's when you call and say, you know what, you need to get saved, my son. Come on now, come on. No matter what happened in the past, I got a new life now. We need right. to talk about right. Jesus. Come on now. That's a father. It's never too late. That's why God gave us second and third chances. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can break any curse that comes your way. But when you gotta ask God how to raise and deal righteously with your children. Because only God knows the plan for you and yours. That's right. I don't know the plan for you. I can help you on what I went through, but I can't tell you what God said for you and your children. Impossible. Only you and him know. Yes. And I learned that with this. I mean, look, I'm telling you what I know. He will tell you what he wants done for you if you're in him. That's why I say it again. I thank God I was saved. Because if I was not saved, I would not know how to deal with it. But because I'm saved, I know what to do. And whenever a situation comes my way, I get on my knees and pray. That's it. That's it, son. And see God, praise Lord, why? Why is this happening? What can I do to stop it from happening? Because only you know about the ways and the plans where I put his son and daughter of mine. Your plans are for me to prosper and be in good health. Why is my not in good health? Why are we not prospering? God only knows. Remember, no matter what happens, you gotta protect yours. You gotta protect your children. You can't leave them to the daycare. You can't leave them to this one or that one. You are responsible. You see, the reason why I say that because when God comes to you, 
He ain't gonna say what the day can. He gonna say, why did you, you. you. take care of what I gave you that you prayed for? Yeah. If you prayed for it. Mm. But either way, it's yours and you have a responsibility to take care of it. That's all right. Hallelujah. The Father of God is a provider and a protector. Yes. The Father of God is a shepherd of his family. A father is a shepherd. And God, Jesus is, our, is the principle that we follow. That's right. Like he said, I tell you to leave the 99 and go after that one, go after that one. Yeah. Mm. I might have three children, but if one go on the street, I'm going to go get that one that went astray. Mm-hmm. Because that's my responsibility. That's what the Bible said. He don't want really need the same folks that go astray. He needs your own. That's right, If my daughter go astray, I'm going to go find her. Uh-huh. Right. And when I'm back into the fall, uh-huh. I'm saying and say. Because it's your responsibility. And you're never too old to do it right. We always get second and third chances. And people, families come back in their life so that they can be a father figure once That's again. It. That's it. Don't blow it. And believe me or not, God brings them back when you're saved. Because he knows you're going to do it right. Come on, son. Come on, come on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ah, my God. Hallelujah. You must have a care in your heart for your offspring. God is a father forever and so are we. Mm-hmm. Fathers of 2010 must understand the only way you're going to raise a godly household is with God. Jesus. There's no other way. Right now, you can't trust no therapists. You can't trust no doctors. You can't trust no one. For real. Right. Mm-hmm. Put no trust in no man. Because God can only be the one. Hallelujah. Oh, because my therapist wasn't even saved. Uh-huh. Mm. So how could you understand about saved things when you're not saved yourself? Mm. So let me tell you something. You need some salvation. So let me tell you why I'm speaking in tongues because the Bible said this is a coded language between me and God. So why do you think I'm cool? <laughs> I'm showing you fire where I got a go shot. Well, yeah. It's coming. Uh, Mano, you can't knock me up for that. But they have tried, we don't give them God. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Bless this you. is something I got. That, you know, a father must be able to go out into the deep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I got something he showed me is this. As men and women of God, I'm here. We can say it's two feet. Mm-hmm. But as you go further, uh-huh. you got four feet. Yes, 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 yes. Six feet. And when you go further back, you got eight and sixteen feet. The farther back you go, the deeper it gets. Uh-huh. It gets. Uh-huh. So when you're here, you're safe. But when you go back here, you get farther and farther away from the anointing or from the pool. Well, okay, and okay. then when you're out here all the time, those back there have no one. Because all the power is here. My God. The power needs to be distributed all around. Yes, yes. So why not have one anointed in the back, in the middle, and in the front? Come on down. Because listen to me, the farther you go out, it gets deeper and deeper and gets to sit. So if you are sent out to the deep, that's your deep. Other words, move from there and help somebody back there. Jesus. Or out there. Hallelujah. But what the Lord is saying, when you go out there to help somebody, come back the same way you went out. Hallelujah. Don't come back with these baggages on you. <laughs> come on, sir. Come on. Don't go out there and get dirty. Don't go out there and you're not ready. You gotta, you gotta understand where you at in this ministry. That's right. You gotta understand you are more than a conqueror. Yeah. But how can you come if you stay still? Listen to me. I learned something. I think it was Peter. He said his shadow, as 
he went by his shadow. Come on. But how can his shadow if he's not moving? Oh, wait. Oh, that's shadow. How can you touch my garment and my garment ain't there for you to touch? Well, come on. <laughs> Too many people are afraid to press through to touch the garment so somebody need to walk back or to touch the garment. Well, if there. Jesus was standing still right like there, he wouldn't go and touch nobody. He walked through the town of Samaria. He never stayed still. He walked through. Hallelujah. Because he needs to go through that town. You can't go through that town if you move. Oh, How can I help you back there? Yes. I know that might be go when you sit it. But it's better when you bring it. Hallelujah. Hey, bring yourself to me. Hallelujah. Jesus. Get off that comfortable chair. Come on now. Come on. Come on. And go out into the deep. Hey. And touch somebody hey. that's drowning. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go in the deep and grab somebody that needs help. You're the life preserver, but you're no good. You don't go out into the deep. But don't just stay in the two feet. That's what he's saying today. The Father's got to be able to go into the deep come and come on. back. Come on. Come on. Born. <laughs> or drowning. Yes. Or never coming back. Yes. You got to be able to minister everywhere you go. Yes, yes. And don't be afraid to stand up and say, you got to get it right. That's right. Don't be afraid to say, the man said, this is not right. You cannot do this because the word of God says don't do it. Mm. And if I don't tell you, then I'm getting in trouble. Because he said it goes on my head because I know that. Jesus, Jesus. It's our job to correct. It's important to get this now. Just because you're her daughter, but if you're in here, and if you drop something on the floor, I have a right to say, pick that up. That's right. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And you shouldn't get upset. That's right. Because I said, pick that up. Right. Because as long as you're in here, you're under. Uh -huh. Now, if she say no, then I go to you and say, your daughter said no. When she drops her, then you go to her. I'm not going to go correcting her. Because that's not my daughter. Right. right. To correct. That's my daughter to say, do this right. If you don't do it right, then I gotta go to the parent and let the parent correct. That's right. Jesus, Jesus. Proper Jesus. protocol. Yes. Right, because, because listen to me. If that parent is not saying this, who are you talking to my daughter? Right. Why are you saying that? And then that causes confusion. Yeah. And we don't want that confusion. So it's the best to go tell the parent what the child is doing wrong. That's don't that's try that's to find nobody else is doing it. You can talk to them, and if you're not a parent, you need to do something with your daughter. But don't say, I can spank you. Spank moms if you want to. For real. Unless you have guardianship over it. Right. Uh, let me know, then I might say, yeah, take them in the back, I'll do that. But don't just take it up on yourself and smack somebody else's child. No, no, no. Father, step up. Because this stuff is going to be happening. It's going to get rough. Oh, yes. It's already rough. Somebody said, you stand for nothing, you're going to fall for everything. Come on now. I'm standing for Jesus. The devil come my way, he has nothing to do. I'm not afraid no more. The enemy had his chance. It's over. Father, 20, uh, 2010, we got to stand up and take back what's out. Come on, sir. Come on. Hallelujah. You can't let them take ours. No more. That's right. Because they think they can do a better job. This the street that is. They they can do a better job with yours than you. You stupid. <laughs> stupid. Better tell them. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm not being too out of hand, but it's true. Because they'll tell you in a minute, you need to put them in here. Right. Or you need to put your son there because they're out of control. No, no, no. I know what to do with mine. You should have never brought them there in the first place. Because mm. people try to take your children because they don't know what to do with their own. So they want to do something with yours 
and see if it works yeah. so they can take it home to their own. <laughs> Doctors do that all the time. They experiment with other people. They start airmen. So, yeah. so when they get to heaven, they go, and then it works with this one. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. So other people money. That's another one. Be careful, man. They tell you to stop in school when you go up a thing. Don't use yours. Play with somebody else and then see how they work. And then if it works, then use yours. Nah, uh-huh. man. Trust God. Seek God for your advice. Seek God for what you need. Because he's the only one that can give you a revelation in 2010. Can't nobody else tell you nothing about yours except God. You got to remember, he's the only one that gave it, and he's the only one that can correct it, and he's the only one that can bring it up. You can't even raise your own children. I don't know when they think you hear sing a song, they only borrowed. They're not yours to keep. That was this alive. You start thinking they're yours, you just borrowed them. God put them here for his purpose, not yours. But your job is going to make you get to God's potential in life. Right, yes. But when we lose focus of God and think it's all about us, that's when you're all with that. Jesus. It ain't rough, it ain't right. <laughs> A father of God must be able to go out into the deep and catch his truth. He must be able to stand the pain that life brings his way. We can't just fall every time somebody steps on our foot. That's, That's right. right, sir. That's right. Shake it off. So what, I messed up. I'm getting back on the track. That's it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because believe me, they're building more and more jails for your children. Oh, yes, they are. They never run out of space to put them. Right. They turn down private just to build a jail for your, a jail for your children. Uh-huh. <laughs> Because they think they can do a better job than you. Because the more they get, the less they get them in church. That's the devil's job. Sorry. Divide and conquer. Don't let it happen, man. Hallelujah. Don't let it happen. We don't have to let it happen. We don't have to take shorts. The Father of God in 2010 must be able to show leadership. You got to show leadership. You can't be a whip and think your children is going to be somebody. You got to show leadership. You got to do like the proverb said. Train them up. And if they don't want to act right, don't stand up. That's right. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yep. Yeah. That's why I went to summer when school is out. Can't tell a teacher I did anything. <laughs> Well, all right. You wait till next September to tell on me. But you ain't even as hot. I'm just joking. But you gotta know how to play this thing, man. Because they want you to spare the world so they can put yours in jail and they get beat up by somebody in there. Yeah. Or shoot them down the street or go through something else. No, it's not happening no more this year. Care for a change. Lessons and I've been learning some stuff about youth, and you know, it's important. What this pastor Warren was saying is that when your youth come into church, let them be able to do stuff, let them be able to feel wanted or welcome because they will feel welcome and wanted in the street. But let them be able to have some leeway in the church. And this is like I said before don't keep them every time in the church. Come on, son. Too much of anything gets you sick. Yes. <laughs> I'm serious. If you need a lot of beans, Ooh. when you get older, you ain't gonna like beans. That's right. <laughs> you gotta have a little bit of soup, a little bit of rice. But I'm serious. As a child, if you keep feeding me liver, when I get older, I'm a hate liver. Because that's all I had. Tired of it. So if you keep stopping this. In moderation. Hallelujah. In moderation. Because there's too much stuff out here. 
to the people who stood in one place. Jesus. Just because that's what I need, now doesn't mean that's what he needs, because he's still young. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that can't be king. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Father's got to be intelligent. We got to see when our children is hurting. We got to see when our children need a break. Yes, sir. We got to see when our children don't understand. They won't tell you, but they'll have that face. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, they will. And if you don't deserve it, they're going to be like, and then somebody's going to take them out there and, 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 and Come on, sir. train your own child up. That's it. No, that ain't part of them. No, what makes them tick, what makes them mad, what makes them sad, what makes them happy, get them on your children. That's it. And listen to me. You've got to spend time with yours. Hallelujah. But they're going to find someone to spend time with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. Don't think they don't know what's going on. Oh yeah, they do. This this child teaches me stuff. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> we had another. He said, "Daddy, what do you take, the creationist or the evolutionist?" I'm like, "Where? <laughs> Where did that come from?" <laughs> Look, <man. laughs> and then he said, "He take the creationist view." I'm like, "Yeah, that's right." But you wouldn't think he would know that. Right. And I thank God he was comfortable enough to ask me that I That's right. Because right. right. mm-hmm. <laughs> they would have told him something totally different. That's right. And messed them up. Yeah. So don't underestimate mm. your child because they young. That's they know right. stuff. That's right, guys. Think, they, know know stuff. they know good stuff. They know a lot of stuff. They know a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to be willing to listen. Yes. And put it out of me. Jesus, come on. Don't let them think it's stupid. No, there's no stupid question. There's no stupid wanting to learn knowledge. Whatever you want, come on. That's it. But you got to let them enjoy life. You got to take them places. Come on. Show them things. That's it. Spend time in the museum, even though it might be corny. What we did for his birthday, we took him to that zoo. But we did it he even say it's boring. <laughs> hey, right here. Hey, <laughs> but that's all right. He went out. Hey, <laughs> no, we ain't going to call you that. We had some fun stuff to do. But you got to do something with your children as far as God and keep right. They lonely, man. They might not act in a short, but they are. They, are. they want a closeness, a togetherness. And don't throw them out all the time. I don't know about that 
But you got to believe that. You got to believe that he has your, your child in his hand. A father of God must believe and must understand and accept the responsibility. Now, I'm not saying if you don't know how to do it, don't ask advice. Mm-hmm. It's okay to ask advice, but let your chief be God. Make sure the advice you get getting coincides with the Bible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because some people will say you know and have nothing right. to do with the Bible. But if you have a godly child, you got to get godly advice. Uh-huh. And make sure that advice is not with the word. Because uh-huh. there's too many Jim Joneses out here. Uh-huh. There's too many Waco Texas out here. There's too many animals out here. you got to be careful with your children, man. Just because they're God doesn't mean they really have your child's best interest. Look at his thoughts. He's in jail now, but look at his thoughts. They had him on, on hope for the things he taught them people. You'd be surprised what they teach your kids behind your back. You should be there with your children. That's true. My father watching and preaching. Yes, sir. This stuff is real. It's going on out there. They like it for little children. Yes, they are. And you just throw them anywhere. <laughs> He'll go to that one camp for the rest of his life. Because yeah. I know that camp. <laughs> all right, all right. So remember, you got to understand that he must accept the responsibility of God. Let God lead him, lead the Father, and let God chastise the Father. Don't be ashamed to get chastised by the word of God. <coughs> he said the word of God is for rebuke, reproof, edification. You can't just get all the edification and don't think he's going to tell you what he's thinking. Come on now. That's right. That's right. So except when you say, wait a minute, you got to sit down because you're doing it wrong and read your Bible and do it right. Uh-huh. I got all this for fast. All oh, this came just from fasting. Fasting and praying, and this revelation just came all over me. And I'm like, wow. God, <laughs> in the middle of the night, it was all right there. But that's what fasting would do. You turn that weight down once in a while and see what happens. It's not me, it's not hard. I did the first week, now I'm doing the next seven. If you can do three, you can do seven. Push yourself. Because then you can push your children. But if you never fast, how are you going to tell your children to fast? That's if you right. never gave them, then how are you going to tell your children to give them something? If you never live right, how are you going to tell your offspring to live right? Remember, God is in charge of leading you and your children to passion. You can lead them to you got to show them how to eat. You got to show them how to drink. You got to show them what to eat, and you got to show them what to drink. You can't just throw that responsibility on anybody else. It's your job to train them up. So if you got to get on your knees and pray at night with them in their room and teach them the Bible, do it. That's it. That's it. I'm not going to expect somebody else to teach them the Word of God. That's right. That's my job. And you got to fix. And you got to help. But you can't do it my way. Because then he gets confused. And then I took be too many teachers. That's it. Because you don't know what's going on. Wait, my father told me to do it this way. Now you tell him to do it this way. Yeah. And now this tell him to do it this way. And they fall apart. Nah, man. I'm protecting my boy mind. Because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And if the wrong stuff get in, oh, yes. it's damaged. And I'm not a man. And I'm not accountable because I'm in charge of what goes in there while he's up under me. That's right. I'm the feeder. I'm the provider. I'm the protector. Jesus. With God. But many people leave that alone and throw it on everybody else. And it's not that way this year. This year, you got to stand up and be the father, mother, and sister, or brother you're supposed to be to your young ones. And if they're not doing it, you step in and do it. And you see somebody in here that's in trouble, help them. Yeah. You don't have to be his biological father to help him when he's falling down. 
Mm-hmm. If he hurt himself, help him up. And let me know. But don't let me know and leave him down. Right, right. That's what people is doing now. Somebody falling in the street, they want to wipe out and go get the cop. No, you help them up and then get the cop. Don't leave him right there. So if something happened to him, look out for him, but then let me know. And if he gets out of hand, let me know. And we can deal with him together. Because maybe you can help me in some area to deal with him. I'm not saying I'm not doing it, but uh, I take advice. Because right. spanking ain't always the right thing. That's it. Actually, he'll tell you, time out works. <laughs> it works. No TV, no PlayStation, that stuff works. Right. When you do it in an extended period of time. That's right. Three days, no TV, it works. Two <laughs> days, no PlayStation, it works. They start getting eighties. <laughs> but you don't have to abuse your children, man. Once you get God in your life, everything should fall in place. I pray we got something out of here.